Last year's Pro Tour had an unforeseeable finish, with Olympian David Chodonsky falling in the final first heat. It appeared all was lost, but A.J. Guinness' fall in the second round sealed the Chodonsky victory. Today begins a new year in dual course racing as Waterville Valley hosts the first stop on the World Pro Ski Tour. Come on! The Pro Ski Tour returns today, the White Mountain Duel Challenge at Waterville Valley, New Hampshire. David Stanfield with former Olympian Pam Fletcher. Comfortable temperatures, light winds with snow in the forecast. 32 of the world's best take on the dual slalom, featuring 28 gates and two pro jumps, two run, single elimination format. Round of 16 highlights, Minnesota's Michael Ankeny edged out Kai Colbert. Canada's Morgan McGeary advanced over Alec Tarberry. Vermont's own Robbie Kelly came out on top over Tucker Marshall. And Olympian Nolan Casper blitzed both runs against Johnny Mankin. White Mountain Duel Challenge quarterfinal matchups look like this. Four Americans are up against two quick Canadians, along with Rosnan from Finland and Kare from Sweden. Now let's go down to Pam Fletcher. She has the Greenhead Lobster Inside the Gate report. Last year on the World Pro Ski Tour, they used drop gates here in the start. This year, the dual door starts are back. The starter will announce red course ready, blue course ready, Racers ready, and on the end of ready, the doors will open and the racers will blast out of the gate. It's important that the racer pushes back on their poles, gets pressure against the kickboard, tips come up, and then they launch out on the word ready when the doors open. Timing is everything in World Pro Ski Racing, and many races will be won right here in the start. Thank you, Pam. Today, we spoke with a focused Michael Ankeny about his game plan and being aggressive on the course's different pitches. You have to use a little bit more tactics. Um, so, you know, you really have to go hard on the flat, building, generating speed, but then on the steeps, you need to maybe risk it a little bit more. Quarterfinal number one, heat number one, Minnesota's Michael Ankeny, red course right hand side, up against Helsinki, Finland's Johannes Rostinen on the blue course. And Rostinen takes the big lead here. Let's see who's gonna land off the top jump. Dead even heat. Ankeny was playing catch up and now he's moving into the lead. Ankeny off the bottom jump, double gate, smashing the gates, some beautiful turns. And here he comes, trips the timing lights. There you go, a 0 0.746 advantage Ankeny. What a run. Back up top, Canadian ski team member Morgan McGarry has his thoughts on racing strategy. The strategy is just trying to nail that timing. I guess it's not really strategic, but just trying to nail that timing um, and just be have a good four or five pushes right out of the gate because I think that's, especially on the flats up here, I think that's going to be a huge advantage to have speed going across those top flats. Back to the top, snow continues to fall, flat light conditions, quarterfinal number two, heat number one. Morgan McGarry, red course, takes on Killington, Vermont's Robert Cohn. McGarry with a strong start, pushing hard, nice turns in the flats, lands first off the top jump. Take a look, Robert Cohn gets hung up a bit in the gates and he goes off course. Cone off course and McGarry, the rising star on the Canadian ski team, takes the lead and a maximum time differential of a 0 0.750. And there is the trouble for Robert Cone, unfortunately, but one more chance to make that up. Up top, Robbie Kelly talks about a skiing family. My mom and all her siblings went to the Olympics and were on the U.S. ski team. So, um, yeah, growing up skiing with them, and then my brother and sister both made the U.S. ski team, and then I have several cousins that were also on the U.S. ski team. To be around them skiing my whole life, it's been awesome. 
Robbie Kelly, Blue Course, great attitude and phenomenal skiing family. Quarterfinal number three, heat number one, up against Montreal's Vincent LaJoy. And a great start for both racers. LaJoy, red course, some very clean turns, good rhythm, and he takes the lead. Robbie Kelly in chase. The bottom pro jump. And he's closing the gap a bit. LaJoy cross blocking. LaJoy takes the lead. Trips the timing light first. Robbie Kelly not giving up. LaJoy wins by .386. Springtime in Waterville Valley, New Hampshire. A two hour drive north of Boston and it continues to snow here. Nolan Casper is an Olympian, a veteran ski racer of over two decades and says a race is a race and the pressure doesn't get to him. Skiing in the Olympics is really, it's not that much different than, than skiing anywhere else. I mean, from, from a skiing aspect, you're doing the same thing. You're going out of a gate, you're skiing a course. A lot of times we're skiing in new mountains and, you know, we, you always have those variables and nothing changes for the Olympics. Um, obviously, if you think about it, there's more mental stress, but there shouldn't be because you're not doing anything different. I've been skiing, I've been racing for 22 years and just being at the Olympics doesn't make that different. A very capable and focused Nolan Casper on the blue course. Takes on a talented Ricard Carre out of Tarnaby, Sweden. Good start for both racers. And take a look at the blue course. Some precise skiing in the flats by Casper. Off the top pro bump, and they land dead even. This is quite a race. And now a couple of quick turns, and Casper has the lead. Here comes the two-time junior national slalom champion out of Sweden, and a good lunge at the finish. And believe it or not, it is Kare with the advantage, .021. More dual course action when we return. World Pro Ski on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Waterville Valley Resort, New Hampshire's family resort. Welcome back to the White Mountain Dual Challenge here at Waterville Valley. David Stanfield along with Pam Fletcher. Now let's go down to Pam with a course report, and she is no stranger to this area. Well, technically right now the red course is faster, and it's not nearly because of the set, it's because of the terrain in the slope on the blue course side. I personally raced my first giant slalom on this track, and I can tell you the terrain is relentless, and with the new fallen snow today, conditions will be challenging. Thank you, Pam. We pick up the action now with the second run in the quarterfinals, Ankeny with a .746 advantage. Finland's Johannes Rostinen needs a blistering run to advance into the semis. The starter's cadence. Rostinen on the red course has to push hard, needs to make up that .746 off the top pro jump. He's got a slight lead, but is it enough? Here comes Michael Ankeny. Ankeny goes around or through the gates. It doesn't matter. He's caught right back up. And now putting pressure on Rossinen. Rossinen does not make up the time. Ankeny advances through. And you gotta take a look at six foot two, 200 pounds. He goes around the gates, he goes through the gates, but he makes it happen. Ankeny really knows how to throttle back, keep an eye on his opponent. Beautiful skiing. He is standing by with Pam Fletcher. Michael, you really have that cross-blocking method down. Is that come to an advantage for you in this qualifying? A tall guy like me has an advantage because I can put myself inside the gate. But when it's bigger turns, it's actually faster to go out and build the turn. With 11 FIS slalom wins, Michael Ankeny has figured it out. Back to the top, quarterfinal number two, heat number two, advantage, Morgan McGarry. Cone on the red course needs a .750 to win and advance 
And Kona is one of the few racers with a chin guard. Take a look at his white helmet. And those gates right there can really pound into your face if you do the cross blocking. And he's hitting them hard, trying to make up a big deficit. As they come into the flats, into the final two gates, he lunges forward and it is not enough. He wins by .356, but it is McGarry out of Canada in blue advancing on. A snowy day in the Northeast, the White Mountain National Forest, the White Mountain Dual Challenge. This is the first of three stops on the World Pro Ski Tour. We are set to go now, quarterfinal number three. Canadian Vincent LaJoy with a .386 advantage tries to hold off a hard charging three-time national champion, Robbie Kelly. Kelly is absolutely tenacious and off the top bump. It's Kelly. Kelly on the red course, really putting the pressure on LaJoy. Kelly needs to make up four tenths of a second. Robbie Kelly now to the bottom. Some nice turns, a little mistake by LaJoy. Robbie Kelly wins by .539. A come from behind victory on the second run. Kelly into the semis. Take a look at this. It all began with a good start. Kelly on the red course, the right-hand side, and then LaJoy began playing catch-up and hitting the gates and slowing himself up. Let's go down to Pam Fletcher with Robbie Kelly. Redneck racing, overcoming the deficit. How did you get it done? Uh, I had a decent start, and then I think I went pretty straight after the jump and kind of made up some time there. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. Happy to be in the semis. As we go back to the top, Nolan Casper, red course, right-hand side. Sweden's Kare with the advantage, 0 0.021. That's two one-hundredths of a second, maybe three inches over Nolan Casper on the red course. Casper needs to make up the time. Quick start, some nice turns, and all of a sudden, Rickard Kare, he cannot afford to let Casper get too much of a lead. At the bottom here. He lunges forward. Norlin Casper wins with a point one nine five. Lo and behold, he advances and the crowd loves it. He's with Pam. Nolan coming back from behind again and another deficit. Yeah, I mean, red course a little faster, so you really gotta try and keep it close when you're in the blue and really attack on the red. Here's a look at our semifinalists, three Americans and a very resilient Canadian coming up when we return. Good times for the young racers at the Waterville Valley Ski Club and good times for the World Pro Ski Tour. Race one of three this year. David Stanfield along with Pam Fletcher. Semifinals first heat. We've eliminated 28 racers, four remain. And we start off with Morgan McGarry and Michael Ankeny. Ankeny on the red course. Slight snow falling, a little bit of flat light. But the red course can give you a bit of advantage. It's quicker and making the most of it right now. Ankeny. Ankeny looking really strong right now. Morgan not falling into the trap of skiing too straight. Gonna pace him. And across the finish line, that's a solid lead. 0.75, impressive skiing. But watch out, you cannot trust that Canadian. He's incredibly quick. Nolan Casper now, three-time Olympian, U.S. ski team member. Up against Robbie Kelly on the red course. Yep. And for Kelly, this is quite the advantage if you can make the most of that quicker red course. For Nolan Casper, whether he's racing in the Olympics or on the World Pro Ski Tour, he just wants to get the job done, and he is right now on the blue course. Kelly now. Looks like Kelly's going to take over the lead. He lands first. That red course, you need to come out with the advantage on that first run, and Kelly does, who is standing by with her own Pam Fletcher. 
Robbie, that red course, talk to me about the difference between the red and the blue. Yeah, I wanted to have at least half a second on him and I only got 0.36, so uh, it's gonna have to really go in the blue this run <laughs> to have a chance to move to the final. Back to the top of the race course, to the top of the semifinal bracket. Morgan McGarry needs an exceptional run, trying to make up 0.75 over Michael Ankeny. Morgan on a slightly faster red course. And take a look at his red course, straight lining it. Looks like he has got a slight lead off the top pro jump. McGarry at 100%, maybe 110%, putting pressure on Ankeny. Ankeny now getting in the back seat. Ankeny all over the place. Here comes McGarry. McGarry trips the lights. Unbelievable. Faster than that 0.75 McGarry come from behind victory. Eliminates Michael Ankeny. Pretty big upset right there. He's with Pam. What was your strategy going into that round? Uh, I knew I had to risk it there. Um, Mike had the maximum advantage on me first run. I knew the red course was faster. I knew I had to risk it, and I stood on the ski the right way. Now back to the top, Nolan Casper on the red course, but he needs to make up a point three six four over Robbie Kelly. Robbie wanted a half second lead when he raced the red course, and now he's on the blue and he's got to pace Casper. Casper with a straight line through that top flat section on the red course off the first jump. And look at the big lead. Powerful skiing by Casper on the red course. Robbie looking for a fast line on the blue. Robbie finds himself chasing down Casper. Nolan Casper attacks the red course across the finish line, trips the lights, 0.624, and he advances. Like Robbie said in his interview, he would love to have a half second lead, but that wasn't the case. Casper, with some precise technical skiing, takes the win and into the finals. Let's go to Pam Fletcher. Any strategy coming into that red course run? Uh, again, it's just got to get a good start. If you can get out front and just ski your own race and not worry about the other guy. And I knew how to make up some time, and I really went pretty aggressive off the first jump and just tried to hold on, and it worked out. Final action up next with USA and Canada's finest world-class racers. Welcome back to the White Mountain Dual Challenge, the World Pro Ski Tour, David Stanfield with Pam Fletcher. As we go to the top, two more runs remaining. This is the first of the final. The 24-year-old Morgan McGarry out of Ontario, Canada, come on, come on. takes on three-time Olympian Nolan Casper. Here's the cadence. Ready. Yep. Blue course ready. Yep. Racers ready. And they are on course as expected. That red course should be quicker up the top. McGarry, a fast line to the top pro jump. McGarry just avoids a course worker. He gets out of shape and McGarry goes down. Did that break his concentration? He has every right to protest this run, but is he gonna do it? Well, it looks like Casper in blue with a maximum time advantage. McGarry skis down a little disappointed. What a weird change of events. He goes from leading the race by 0.75 to losing by 0.75. He's still got a smile on his face. There is the course worker doing his job, but he didn't realize racers were on course. McGarry lost his concentration. He needed possibly to stop right there and ask for a rerun. Pam, what is going on? Morgan, boy, tough stuff up there. Yeah, I was really happy with the run. I was, I was, uh, Halfway down there, um, I was pushing it. I knew Nolan skiing well, so I knew I had to push it. Pushed a little too hard. There was a little bobble with the course worker, but honestly, I don't think it, it messed me up. If a racer feels he has interfered with, he can ask for a rerun. 
Morgan McGarry is a great racer and a great sportsman, and he feels he wasn't interfered with, so he moves on. In all forms of racing, to finish first, first you must finish. McGarry can make a comeback. Anything can happen. Remember, at Sunday River last year, the championship, both finalists fell. There's Morgan McGarry. Okay, gentlemen. He is looking for a brilliant run on the blue course, and it's going to have to happen right now. Good start, but advantage right off the bat going to Nolan Casper. Casper on the red course has that .75 advantage. And take a look at Morgan McGarry. McGarry getting out of shape here, trying to chase down Casper. And look, a little reverse shoulder gets on the back of his skis. He's having problems. No problem for Nolan Casper. He takes the win. He is our new White Mountain Dual Challenge Champion. Let's go down to Pam Fletcher. Impressive racing today. You had quite the strategy, I think, going from run to run. Yeah, I'm, I mean, definitely each course is, blue course is definitely slower. And you know, I was lucky, I think it may have been a little better to have blue course first because you knew you had a faster course second run and you really had a charge. So if you could keep it close first run, it definitely made it a little, a little easier second run. But I mean, these guys are skiing fast and Fortunately, Morgan got got a little blocked out by a course worker, but um, dude's a real, real sport. And um, honestly, I saw it and I thought maybe we get a rerun there, but um, it's just sometimes it's how it goes. So, you know, hopefully we we'll see him over at Aspen and back to the finals together. A look at our final results of the White Mountain Duel Challenge. Nolan Casper takes the win. Tough luck for Morgan McGarry, but some great skiing. Third place, Michael Ankeny, and fourth, Robbie Kelly. Congratulations to Nolan Casper. I'm David Stanford, along with Pam Fletcher. Our next stop on the World Pro Ski Tour, Snowmass Colorado on CBS Sports Network.